Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is time for our daily devotion. I think I'm finally on. There we go. And so we're going to take a moment to wait for folks to join us as we typically do. This is our time where we gather together for scripture reading, upper room re uh, devotion, our reflection, and our prayers that we say today. So I invite you all to come and join me as you do. If you want to leave a quick note and let me know that you are here, a comment and it would be great. And would love to say good morning to you. Jack and Pat Tennell, good morning. You're already here. Great to have you folks today. Good morning, Stacy. Glad that you and Addie are here with us. Congratulations to you, by the way. If you, um, if you want, with you and Gary's permission, of course, with Paul and Aaron's permission, if you'd like for me to announce that during our joys on Sunday, I would be more than happy to announce the birth of Wyatt. Good morning, Linda. It is kind of a chilly day. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. Glad you're here. Thank you, Stacy, for that, uh, that uh, confirmation. I will take care of that. The question is, is have you gotten a picture of him yet? I'm going to guess you probably have, but just in case. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to you. Hi, Garth. Hi, Cherry. Good morning to you. For those of you here, we're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 4. Hi, Marie. Good morning. Genesis chapter 4, if you want to find that. Verses 7 to 22. I need to go back and count. I'm wondering if we've done 365 of these. I think we got to be getting pretty close. Take out 52 Sundays because we haven't done Sundays, but we, we got to get pretty close to, to that number, I'm going to guess. I'm glad all of you are here for your faithfulness, for being a part of this. Uh, as, a, as a We were having a conversation a second ago. With, I was having one with Stacy, but for those of you who may not know yet, Stacy and Gary are proud grandparents again. Aaron and Paul had a little boy yesterday. His name is Wyatt Allen. So be in prayer for the family as they transition with this new little one in their family. I'm sure everybody's all happy and healthy, but that's good to, to be able to celebrate. Good morning, Jack. Glad you're here. Again, Genesis chapter 4, verses 7 to 22 is our reading. So let's get started with our prayer of illumination. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. So Genesis chapter 4, beginning in verse 7. If you do the right thing, won't you be accepted? But if you don't do the right thing, sin will be waiting at the door ready to strike. It will entice you but you must rule over it. Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. The Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain said, I don't know. Am I, bro am I my brother's guardian? The Lord said, what did you do? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. You are now cursed from the ground that opened its mouth to take your brother's blood from your hand. When you farm the fertile land, it will no longer grow anything for you, and you will become a roving nomad on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Now that you've driven me away from the fertile land and I am hidden from your presence, I'm about to become a roving nomad on the earth, and anyone who finds me will kill me. The Lord said to him, it won't happen. Anyone who kills Cain will be paid back seven times. 
The Lord put a sign on Cain so that no one who found him would assault him. And Cain left the Lord's presence, and he settled down in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife immediately. She became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain built a city and named the city after his son Enoch. Irid was born to Enoch. Irid fathered Mahula. Mahula fathered Methuselah. Methuselah fathered Lamech. And Lamech took two wives, the first named Adah and the second Zillah. Adah gave birth to Jabal. He was the ancestor of those who live in tents and own livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the ancestor of those who play stringed and wind instruments. Zilla also gave birth to Tubal Cain, the ancestor of blacksmiths and all artisans of bronze and iron. Tubal Cain's sister was Nama. And our uh, writer today is Jody Williams from I Illinois. I was going to say Israel, and that's not right. <laughs> Illinois. Uh, her focus verse is 1 Corinthians 10 31, which says, whatever you do, you should do it all for God's glory. And here is what she wrote. Recently, recently, some local high school students were returning home from a math competition when the brakes went out on their bus. The driver took her foot off the accelerator and slowly made her way to the shoulder of the road, eventually stopping just a few feet from a ditch. Then she called for help and kept an eye on the students until help arrived. This experienced driver was praised for staying calm in a dangerous situation and for acting on her training. I thought about how bus drivers don't usually receive accolades for their work even though they have an, an extremely important job. Main, many of our daily tasks seem mundane, and it's only during events like these that we learn to appreciate the people who carry them out. Genesis 4, 19 to 22 speaks of the descendants of Cain and the talents God gave them. Among these gifts were raising livestock, playing instruments, and working with metal. These gifts don't seem like holy callings in themselves, but any task done for the Lord becomes a noble one. Paul teaches us, whatever you do, you should do it for all, you should do it all for God's glory. When we heed these words, we invite God to use us to draw others to our Creator, even when our work seems mundane. Thought for the day, whatever my work, I can do it for God. I uh, had an opportunity this morning to go up to church and visit with all of our PDO teachers. Uh, Jill had a staff meeting for them today, and they were all present. And so I had a chance to go up and just uh, thank them all for all that they've done this school year, for their persistence, for their patience, for their willingness to make some vital changes and be adaptive, and for their willingness to serve the kids and the parents. It's been a tough year for them because they used to cross-pollinate quite a bit. and They used to be able to move from room to room, and they used to be able to go down the halls and see one another. But this year, they haven't been able to. They've worked in more of a cohort kind of segment, and so they have made sure that, that only one set of children are in the hallway at a time, that the teachers are in their classrooms, and that they're not, you know, infesting each other or or getting close to each other, you know, as teachers and things. So it's been an interesting year for them. And I think it was critical for someone to go up and say, thank you for all that you are doing, because you're doing it, whether you believe it or not, for God's glory. What our Parents Day Out teachers do brings God glory, because they're teaching these little kids the wonderful stories of Jesus. They are taking an opportunity to love on them and provide them a a level of normalcy while all the rest of us feel like we're living an abnormal life. Right? Each one of us has an opportunity. We have the gifts, we have the talents that God has given us that we can use, and we can use them for God's glory. And it doesn't mean that you can only use them during a certain period of time. I know folks think that, you know, I have to be a certain age to, to be able to serve God, and then when I get to a certain age, I can't serve God anymore. God can't use me. I don't have anything else left to give. That's not true. God can use any one of us for God's glorious purposes. And I think we just need to find those opportunities to recognize the moments when God is using us. 
And it isn't necessarily always about some ministry task. It could be simply saying hello to a neighbor that might you might not know what their day is like, but that hello might be very meaningful to them. It might be simply helping someone, opening a door for them, or or whatever. There's a lot of different things that God can use in this world. And so whatever we do, we should do it with a smile on our face, with joy in our hearts, knowing that God can use it for God's own glory and God's purposes. So think about today, where you're going to go, the people that you might encounter along the way, and is there an opportunity for God to use you in that simple moment, even if it's in the mundanest of things? Think about the ways in which God could use you today. And whatever you do, do it all for God's glory. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Dear Lord, help us to remember that you use our talents and our gifts for your glory. Help us to recognize those moments when that is possible. Even in the mundanest of things, what we think is just simply... Uh, a routine kind of activity or something that we're just used to doing, something that we do mindlessly may be a blessing to someone else. So use us to be that today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for being here today. A joy as always to spend this time in devotion with you. I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at the same time as we gather for our Saturday morning devotion. Come and join me. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy what you can of this Friday, whatever it may be for you, and may you go and be a blessing to someone, and may God use you for God's glory and purposes. Thanks, everybody, for being here. God's peace and grace be with you.